Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I'm on leechess.org and I'm going to play a 15-2 game. Let's try uh let's try an E4 game. Okay. Sicilian defense. All right, knight to f3. First time playing this opponent, Peshka. Alrighty. E6. Uh, I don't know if I want to play an open Sicilian. Knight to c3 or g3. Let's get knight c3 in first. And see if uh, black kind of goes flexible. Okay. Well, my first thought with uh, d5 is that I will not be going with g3. Because this position is going to open up fast. And there's already tension in the center. And potentially the e-file will open up. So I'm more fixated on simply going through the door that's already opened. Moves to consider. I think I need to take. Yeah, let's take. Probably end up with some uh, isolated pawn type position. And I think the way forward is to first play d4. Wow. They're playing very fast. That's not why I'm wowing. <laughs> but uh, that is a very weakening move. Well, I imagine they've played this position type before with uh, how fast they're playing, but I feel like a computer would somehow win this as white already. Or at least have a, a strong pull in an open position. I mean, I was saying I didn't want to devote an additional tempo to deploy my bishop. This diagonal was already opened, and there's a, a, some time being invested on this move, so I don't know if the bishop is really planning to play to b7. I, I wonder if they just don't want to play with an isolated pawn. Instead, maybe preparing to recapture and have an, a hanging pawn structure. Hmm. All right, so how do we treat this? I'm thinking about bishop to b5, and... Yeah, um, probably just bishop to b5 and castles, a quick rook to e1. I don't want to stay on this file. Uh, going to d3. I don't know. I guess I could go to d3, but... There could uh, be c4, so if I take here, the queen has to capture. Yeah, if I take here, the queen has to recapture, otherwise I get the d5 pawn. Ooh. I should really, I really want to think this one through, because I, I, I sense that b6 is just way off. How can I press? I feel like I should be winning a pawn somehow by force. Bishop takes, queen takes. I could also, on, on this next move, I can consider uh, queen to e2. Captures. Um, queen to e2, queen block. Then I could take. Like if this and the queen blocks, I could take. The knight has to recapture, and then I went out on d5. So a queen check bishop here. I, I just win d5. With queen to e2. So queen to e2 if they block with the bishop or the queen. If they block with the queen, I take the bishop and then d5. If they block with the bishop, I just take here. Because now my bishop's defended by my queen. Not sure what to make of this. What am I missing? Let's find out. This is illegal. Got a block on this square somehow. I think I've I might have played something like this a long while ago as black. B six. Not not I don't think this exact position type, so now now that they're pausing, I think they're um, yeah. 
I'm just going to be playing up a pawn, and it's going to be an endgame. Queen's off, and I'm going to be up a pawn. I actually have the option to no. So I'm just I'm just looking. Do I first uh, capture on d7, or do I take here? So just two things to consider. Hmm. Uh, knight takes d5. Queen takes queen. I would simply recapture with my bishop. My concern with this is there's bishop takes bishop. Let's see. Knight takes d5. I would prefer to take uh, take on d5. Knight takes d5, bishop takes bishop. Knight takes queen. Bishop takes queen. They're up a piece in that current position, and both our pieces are hanging. I could take this knight, but then they, they take here. I don't think that that variation is working out. So therefore, I think we are just going to take here with check, and now take here next. I don't mind going uncastled. Okay. So I'm up a pawn and the queens are gone. Do we consider this an endgame? I guess so. Threatening a fork. Okay. So I just want to uh, complete development. If I do this in a smooth way, there shouldn't be any issues with converting this. Okay, let's try to be as proficient as possible. So, uh, my knight is vulnerable, though he should not be too quick to budge. Yes. Let's not budge with this knight so fast. Candidate moves rook to d1 and c4. I kind of like this. In the event of a, uh, a check, I could tuck my king away. Hmm. Captures here, c4. I think I like rook to d1. My knight is unprotected. Rook to d1 takes. I could just take with the knight. My knight is attacked. I do have c4. Hang on. Rook to d1 captures. Knight takes knight here, and I don't get c4 in. Hmm. I can always just take with the rook, too. Rook d1 takes, I'll take with the rook. There's bishop c5, but I'll drop all the way back to d1. It'll probably be the case that their knight has to go here anyhow, and maybe they, they end up just getting exchanged. Let's start with rook to d1. Already at an endgame. Okay, so probably just take here. Yep, let's just take. And I'm just to move away, uh, get my bishop out. I'm going to hold off. I'm going to keep this tension. I capture, I help them to develop. So how about bishop to g5? Uh, anything else to consider? I don't think so. Let's just put my bishop on g5. My rooks are now connected. The check isn't, uh, this wouldn't be a good idea, because then where's he going to go? My king wouldn't mind going to, uh, he wouldn't mind being demoted, let's say, to f1. You know, it's, uh, he's going to have a tough time if they go for that. So now another option. I could uh, give up the bishop for knight, enter an imbalance, be up a pawn, and have a fantastic square in f5. So I feel like my opponent's giving me a lot of things. So far, just uh, a pawn, and now something to work with uh, structure-wise.
Hmm. I don't know if I even want to give up that type of... I, I don't know if I want to go in for that imbalance, to be honest. Yeah, I do. Yeah, let's let's take another little advantage here. Let's take with the rook. Probably bishop to c5 here. Uh, I think I want to keep a rook on. I don't want to enter a strictly uh, minor piece endgame. It's still good for me, but I think with these guys split how they are, my rook can turn into Pac-Man. Okay. So what to do? Rook to d1? Do I have a good spot for my knight? I could do this. But hey, hang on. I was talking about this square, right? Maybe I should just go there, but let's see. If knight to f5, there's a check, king here, rook here. I don't want to, I want to make sure I minimize any counterplay that my opponent has. Let's start with this. Just continue to move forward. Continue to improve. If they put me in a pin, I'll play c3. King and pawn in games are winning. Let's put the king here. And what is the follow-up? So c3 not only defends this, but also prepares to maybe kick the bishop away. Okay. I'm leaning towards g4. g4 I think I like. Just to... Uh, Prepared to next anchor the knight here. Let's put g4 on. Knight on f5 has to be pretty good. And again, the name of the game for this uh, position type is I just want to make sure my base points do not even experience pressure on them. I don't want to. I don't want to allow it to even get to that point. Here, he would just go there and shove, push me away. I want to maintain my pawn on g4. I don't want to capture and allow this, the, the exact thing I'm trying to avoid. Even though I would acquire a pass pawn, I don't like the fact that that rook has some pressure. How would I defend it conveniently? My king would be devoted to the uh, defense of that. So, what about b4 here? Or maybe even rook to d2 with the idea of maybe trading rooks at this stage. Now, let's hang on. How about, uh, how about rook to e4 and then preparing f4 next? Or, excuse me, king to e4, check here. And then maybe my rook comes over here to start attacking pawns. Here, check, here. A little roll reversal. The defense of a d4 point, but something more forceful is maybe this. In fact, okay, I mean, if this rook leaves this file, isn't there going to be a problem? So what about b4? Yeah, this is maybe a bit too slow. How about we just push here, b4? What to do? Because if this, then I have c4. Then the rook would then have... If the bishop moves somewhere other than d6, I have this move. And when the rook moves, then I have some pin. In fact, I have a winning idea. I'm going to win this game. c4. And when the rook moves, I play knight to f5 or knight to b5, and it's a forced... Forced win. Uh, king and pawn endgame being up a pawn. So let me just double check things here. 
pretty sure this is a game over move. They have everything on this file. C4 followed up with knight to f5. And that should be the ball game. There's no good checks. There's no bishop move that could attack my rook. C4 it is. They might resign here. The only way to save the piece is this. No, it's not even saved because rook here, knight here, rook here, here to defend, and I even pile up some more on the pinned bishop with c5. So this isn't a, a one king and pawn endgame. It's just a, well, it's soon to be an endgame where I'm up a piece. b6, everything is going is going back to, what move is that? b6 was move number 5. As mentioned, I don't think it was, uh, I had that exact position as black before, but uh, I've done something like that, and uh, Okay, so they're going to try this endgame. Yeah, and it, it did not turn out well, so... Technical phase here. Many different ways to approach this. I could just capture and win the king and pawn endgame. Um, I... I'm pretty confident that I know how to win that, but uh, I mean, it's not necessary, but it's, uh, yeah, I actually see a way where I would have, uh, plenty of, uh, tempi and I'd, I'd mop up these pawns. So maybe even just for instructional purposes, this is a good approach. Let's just make sure I establish first and foremost, a strong king position. One pawn restricts two. I have this guy, I see him as a a reserve tempi, but in this particular position I don't really even need to move this pawn because I could bounce back and forth on these two squares. And in the end that f f that will force black to uh, leave control of f5, and once I'm here then there's only one square he could be on to control f6. So let's do it. King to f4. Slowly inch my way up to f5. Next I'll pick up him and then I'll have three versus two on the queen side and a two once I pick up one of these two. Two versus one on the king side. I'm going to keep these guys sitting whenever he's challenged. Stay there. So let's continue. On this push, I could capture or advance. And this is what I was talking about, these uh, reserve tempi moves. There's other approaches. I could just push the candidate pass pawn to victory lane. Let's go with that for. And on this, now I could capture... Let's just double check. Yeah, they're just way too slow. This isn't something I need to calculate. Take. And one. They have one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. I don't have to calculate that. What I want to do here is just simply stop this pawn from getting any further. All right, they're just going to play this one out to the end. This attempt to run after that pawn is just not working. So I'm just going to push him now. And one last little trick. And make sure there's no stalemates. No stalemates. 
updates. Let's get this check. And this would be stalemate. We don't want to do that. But we could promote with check next. And that's going to do it. It's just an opening slip in a um, in an open position. Um, so let's go in. Yeah, well, before I go into the analysis board, there isn't really too much to um, there really isn't too much to go over. Um, I was saying at this point with knight to c3 that maybe I go with g3, but it, just with one move things changed. I put an I wanted to put an emphasis on, hey, one door is open, you're going out that one. You're getting castled. In every move, I think I uh, move forward in some way. I improve the quality of my pieces, and this just helped me. And I think it's just a losing move. It's extremely difficult to deal with the check. In a quick queen to e2. Also notice it's an open position, completely open e file, and black is a long way off from, well, there no pieces were developed, so they're a long way off from going kingside and getting the king to safety. This might just be, a, uh, you know, a busted move. Yeah, it's, I think this one's just gone. Probably have to do something a little bit different here, but you can't, no. You block with the knight, you're dropping this, so this is just, after b6, it's a, uh, I don't know, maybe a bit too, uh, a bit too much to deal with, right? You think it's just losing? We'll see, I'll just double check it. Let me uh, put on the analysis board, but I think I'm just winning a pawn by force, so let's see. What is it? Somebody already did an analysis. Where are we at here? It's still uh, crunching the numbers. It's backtracking. Goes from the end and it's at move 10. We're almost there. So we'll see what the final tally is, but you know, throw, throw the engine right on. Keep these two arrows on board. D5 is fine, but uh, after B6... Plus 1.7, plus 2, growing advantage. I'll call it plus 2, but yeah, that's just Gonzo. Following up with bishop to b5. So where are we at? Final tallies. Yeah, it's just a b6. It's a opening mistake. You need to... I didn't, I didn't let anything slip so much. Okay, it was plus 2, and then it, at one point it dropped down to... A pawn and a half, 1.2, but that's still, I think that that's still significant enough. Let's just kind of breeze through. Oh, well, no, not, not, not so fast. Not so fast. This is interesting. It doesn't, it doesn't want to go in for knight takes pawn here. Bishop to e3. Huh. <laughs> What's the idea with this? To say, you're going to have a very difficult time completing development? because the queen gets in the way of the bishop. So bishop here, and if something like this queenside castle, look at how quick my pieces are coming into play. So this is, this is very, uh, this is a very brutal variation. Every move is, yeah, deadly. It's just a ton of potential energy, and this is going to be cracked open. D5 in the end will probably fall, and then some, Oh, that's that's pretty cool. That's that's a cool one. Not grabbing the material straight away. But claiming, yeah, you're gonna have trouble completing development, and this position will open up and my both of my rooks will occupy the open file. Ah, okay, so that's the that's where there was a, a bit of a dip by uh grabbing the pawn instead of playing bishop to e three. Now that's instructive. I I learned a little something right there. Okay. All right, I'm happy with this decision. It likes rook to d1. C4, I guess, is okay, too. I didn't voice it, but my initial... 
thought was to bring the knife back. But there's no reason to uh, run away just yet. Yeah, so this is this is why there's just this pawn and a half advantage because I didn't play that bishop to e3 move. And yeah, this is just gone. King to f3, moving forward. C3, G3, I'm not sure what G3 is about. And, um, well, right here, it likes H3. So just before this move was played, again, I don't want to bring it to this point. This is still some advantage, but now look what I have to do with my king. See, it's an endgame. I want the king in the center, and if he could be closer to the center and provide uh, support to a pawn... If there's a pawn he has to defend, I would prefer he stay um, in toward, towards the center somewhere and fulfill that role. Even though I have now a passed pawn, it's still a long way off before I could successfully uh, push this pawn away. It's it's going to take some some more work. If both of these pieces are exchanged, yes, bring it on where I have a a passed pawn like this. So if somehow, I don't know how to even show this, let's say, let's say this move is played. This move here takes, 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 and, okay. In this position, you know, I would take because I had a passed pawn like this, but that's not the greatest uh, illustration that I did just there, but I, I, with pieces on the board, I don't with the work with the rook on the board with the rook on the board still that could be putting pressure on this pawn. I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't want to make this kind of a capture on h5. That's really the key thing I, I should be highlighting with the with the rooks on. I don't want to take like this, but with the rooks off, yes, even even in a minor piece endgame, I would I would be capturing like this. Suppose their king was over here and they were able to recapture. I would still do it in that case because I do get this outside pass pawn. But in this case, h3 is fine. And this is this is good, a good follow-up. I'm glad I eventually came to that conclusion where b4 is is good and this is just gone now. Putting the king here and the alternative is rook here. Knight to one of those two. And then a follow-up c5. And he's gone. And then it's just a one king in pawn endgame. In the end, if they tried to go in this direction, they're just not going to win the race. They're way too slow. But as it played out in this one, we went on to checkmate. And that is it. B6, as it turns out, that's the... That was the big lemon, and it uh, resulted in a, a pretty smooth win. Okay, as usual, feel free to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below. Hope you're having a great day, and I will catch you soon. I just want to make a quick addendum uh, video here to the 15-2 game I just played. Uh, I was curious about my opponent I went into their profile their name rang a bell uh, they followed me a while back and it just uh yeah it rang a bell anyhow I went into the profile and yeah my opponent is seven years old the game that I just uh, played my opponent is seven years old he's from the Ukraine his name is Tihon Cherniev apologies if I'm not pronouncing it right. They have the details in their uh, profile. I just think that that is so awesome. <laughs> and I just wanted to point that out. Um, seven years old and to already have this kind of uh, understanding of the game. That's just so cool. So, uh, Tihon, if you at some point come across this video... Keep it up, buddy. You have a lot of potential, and uh, that's really, really awesome. Uh, you played a good game. So continued success is my main point here.
And uh, that's all I really wanted to add. I think it's uh, really great to see such a young talent um, playing the game. So continued success, and uh, yeah, that's all I uh, wanted to add. So keep it up, buddy. Take care.